I said what I believe with my soul Ain't what I see with my eyes And there's no turning back this time I am a patriot And I love my country Hey guys, welcome back to another broadcast. Today I want to talk about Free Comic Book Day's preview of Ta-Nehisi Coates' Captain America, or more specifically, how Marvel has put a rabid ideologue onto the book, and bad things are going to come out of it. Now, I wanted to actually talk about this particular book for a long time, but I wanted to hold off. There was a couple images that came out a couple weeks ago. I saw videos going up about it. Yellow Flash covered this as well. Uh, in general, I like to let the dust settle. I like to get a little bit more information. Um, I'm not saying he was wrong in making those videos at all. That is definitely not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that I, I wanted to have more information before I went forward with this. And as I've said before, and I will say many times, the universe works in mysterious ways. Ta-Nehisi Coates today put out an article on Kanye West. Obviously, Kanye got some people really angry with him because they put coats on the, he's got the little bat phone in his office and the powers that be within the entertainment industry said, hey man, we gotta take this guy out. Can you write basically a novella hit piece on this guy? And he did it. And you could tell that, well one, he doesn't really have an editor at The Atlantic, the magazine that he works for. But two, he spent a lot of time writing this piece. He definitely was not writing whatever time he allots to writing Captain America. He put that all aside and he spent the last week or whatever the heck it was writing a hit piece on Kanye West that explains exactly who this guy is and who we're dealing with. And I will also get into the book as well. Uh, long story short, the one thing that you could always count on with a lot of these guys is Nick Spencer did the exact same thing, Mark Wade. Mark Wade's run on Captain America will be the weakest out of all three of these guys in terms of just the technical storytelling. Um, they're actually more intelligent than Mark Wade, and they're more politically informed, so there's more layers to what they do. Regardless, they're still ideologues. Uh, my point is there's always this somber tone because these SJW writers are trying to teach you something. If you were just a little bit more intelligent, it wouldn't be so hard to teach you why you are an idiot for following the politics that you follow if they deviate from SJWism and that particular worldview. Now, Nick Spencer said not too long ago, um, he said uh, regarding Tanahisi Coates, he said, I was almost moved to tears hearing. Tanahisi's pitch for this at the last retreat. It follows up on Secret Empire in ways I didn't dare to hope for. Dream come true when a writer you admire so much decides to use stuff you left on the table, trust me, and will tell an incredible story about what Cap means in the world today. Do not miss it. Now, to these guys, what Captain America means, he's always seen through their particular political lens. Uh, as you will see in Mr. Coates's piece, he talks about white freedom and black freedom, as if those are actually things, as opposed to freedom freedom. People like you, people like me, we don't sort of separate freedom into different boxes. Even as far as human rights, there are human rights, whereas the Nick Spencers of the world and the Mr. Coates of the world, they start breaking things down into gay rights, black rights, women's rights, all these different sorts of rights that endlessly, continuously break up further and further and further into all these different groups. Whereas again, uh, you and I would say there are human rights that apply to everybody and that's what you strive for, that is the ideal. But again, we won't get too much into the identi identity politics at this particular time. Uh, when you take a junky foundation, in this case, Secret Empire, something that's being sold for 99 cents on Comixology, 
Nick Spencer, fantastic writer. Buy his books for 99 cents in the bargain digital bargain bin. Um, Mr. Coates has decided, you know what? I'm going to take something that was just incredibly horrible in terms of the reception, and I am going to build on it. I saw this particular uh, post on Mr. Spencer's in, uh, Instagram account. He's talking about a crawler, and I will use the analogy. Say you have this crawler, and it was just dropped on the floor. Maybe it was dropped in the toilet. Somebody pulled it out. They gave it to you. It tasted horrible. Probably was going to make you sick. You didn't want it. There was maybe a dozen of them. And the chef said, you know what? We're going to make this better. We're just going to put some whipped cream on it. We're going to put a strawberry on top of it. And we're going to serve it to you again. And maybe you'll like it better now. And that's exactly what Mr. Coates is doing with assuming if he's going to build on Secret Empire, which people just wanted, just make it go away. Just let's pretend it never happened. There are other Marvel stories where they essentially swept it under the rug. No, we can't do that with Secret Empire. We want to build on it, even though it completely fractured Captain America's fan base and many longtime Marvel readers. So that's what you're going to get. Now, in this particular piece on Kanye today, Kanye recently has showed that he doesn't particularly want to be bogged down by, a, by an ideology. He wants to just be viewed essentially as, as Kanye, and he wants to be a free thinker, which, again, there's nothing wrong with somebody who says, you know what, I want to be an independent. I don't want to be beholden to a political ideology. So the start of this piece, it says, I'm not black, I'm Kanye, but this is in a derogatory way. And he says, Kanye West wants freedom, white freedom. And as I have said before, uh, you could go through this particular issue if you read the narration. There's this tone. There's it's like a dirge. It's it's sad. And the pendulum at Marvel Comics these days, it swings wildly from one end to the other. You either have Squirrel Girl silliness on one end, or on the other you have this serious SJW political stuff where they're trying to teach you a lesson. You're in a college class and a college professor uh, your liberal college professor is trying to beat into your mind, why are you so stupid? Why don't you get it? And if you don't get it, you're a bad person. So I'll read a little bit of Mr. Coates's stuff right here, and you'll kind of get an example of what I'm talking about. There's this gravity to his voice. Poor Kanye. He's, he's not on the reservation. He's not thinking properly. We've got to make him think correctly. He says, what Kanye West seeks is what Michael Jackson sought, liberation from the dictates of that we. In his visit with West, that rapper T.I. was stunned to find that West, despite his endorsement of Trump, had never heard of the travel ban. He don't know the things that we know because he's removed himself from society to a point where it don't reach him, T.I. said. West calls his struggle the right to be a free thinker, and he is, indeed, championing a kind of freedom, a white freedom, a freedom without consequence, freedom without criticism, freedom to be proud and ignorant, freedom to profit off a people in one moment and abandon them the next, a stand-your-ground freedom, a freedom without responsibility, without hard money, a Monticello without slavery, a confederate freedom, the freedom of John C. Calhoun, not the freedom of Harriet Tubman, which calls you to risk your own. And so, for Kanye West, I wonder what he might be if he can find himself back into connection, back to that place where he sought not a disconnected freedom of I, but a black freedom that called him back, back to the bone and drum, back to Chicago, back to home. Okay, so this is, again, more and more of the same. This was celebrated across the media. People were going gaga over this. It was trending on Twitter. They were saying this was the most intelligent piece of writing they've ever read. And 
my response to that is that is that says more about your reading habits than about the actual quality of this. Uh, no doubt, Mr. Coates is an intelligent man. He's got a way with words. He spends a lot of time on them. But it's possible for a man to say a whole lot without saying much at all. And typically, this is what Mr. Coates does when he's and when he's not when he actually does say something. He's putting people into these binary groups. You're either for white freedom or you're for black freedom, one or the other. And uh, it's sad because it really doesn't have to be that way. So with some people, they think when they yell at the person across for them, it gives their arguments more legitimacy. But for Mr. Coates, he generally does this thing where as long as he, he speaks with passion and intensity, he thinks that actually gives his arguments more legitimacy as well. Uh, the thing with Michael Jackson, which is funny, he was talking about how Kanye West is ignorant of all sorts of things. Michael Jackson's autopsy proved that he had vitiligo, which is a pigmentation disease where you, you lose the pigment in your skin. He wasn't, in this particular piece, Mr. Coates says that uh, Michael Jackson was trying to turn himself white. That wasn't the case. He actually had vitiligo. Uh, my, my mom actually has vitiligo. I have vitiligo. Luckily, at least as of now, it's not on my face. It's actually on my ankles and on parts of my legs and stuff like that. So on a white person, especially a hairy white guy like myself, you don't really see it as much, especially depending on where it's coming in on and how fast. But on a black individual, that would it, it obviously stands out. Anyway, my point is, is this piece talks about how Michael Jackson was a black god who was trying to be white. Actually, he was a black guy with vitiligo. But don't let that get in the way of your ideology, Mr. Coates. Anyway, the point here is, is that this is the kind of person that we're dealing with. We're dealing with an ideologue. He's writing Captain America. Everything he sees is through a political lens. And you will never see somebody like Diversity in Comics hired at Marvel because he doesn't fit that mold. The only time you're allowed to look at things through a political lens is if you're looking at it from the left. You're not allowed to look at it from the center right, and you're definitely not allowed to look at it from the right at all. And that is very telling. So this is where we're at these days. I don't have very high hopes for Captain America whatsoever. A lot of people will like this because it will be technically well written. It'll be kind of like Black Panther where it should have been a novel instead of a comic book. And there'll be this weight and gravity to, to it and people will just say it's awesome because it's serious, kind of like Secret Empire. But at the end of the day, it's filled with left-wing SJW talking points. And that's basically what it boils down to. If you agree with me, you're Captain America. If you don't agree with me, you're kind of a Hydra agent, Nazi racist, those sorts of things. So again, that's about it for now. I will be buying this book and reviewing it, at least for the first few issues. If it gets too ridiculous, I'll just say, you know what? I made my point. Enough said. Moving on. Anyway, that's about it for now. Don't want this to run too long. Thanks to all my Patreon members, new and old, and thanks to all my subscribers, new and old. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about Mr. Coates on Captain America what you think about his essay on Kanye West. I'll link to it so you can check it out. It'll take you probably quite a while to finish. It's pretty long. And anything else related to this issue as well, Mark Wade or even Nick Spencer's Secret Empire. Again, that's about it for now, and I'll see you guys soon. See ya. All right, children. The lights are out and the party's over. It's time for me, Dr. D, to start running and say goodbye for a little while. And I know you're going to miss me, so I'll leave you with this. You know that big ball of radiation we call the sun? Well, it'll burst you into flames if you stay in one place too long. That is if the static don't get you first. So remember, even if you're dusted, you may be gone. But out here in the desert, your shadow lives on without you. This is Dr. Death Defying, signing off.